So what if I tell you that this scene right here, taken from Bruno Simon's 3GS journey course, is actually made by using view components. And when I say entirely by using view components, it's because here in the experience.view, we're using some components from Trace, yes, and we are adding a camera, we are adding the portal, the fireflies, and the ambient light. Then if we go to the portal itself, for example, it's another view component, a single file uh, component, we set up a syntax where we are loading all the different uh, models, for example, the one for the portal, also the baked texture, and then we are creating the model itself as a mesh. Even the fireflies that are floating here belongs to this fireflies.view, which is another component as well, where we create a buffer geometry and we add it to our scene. This video is sponsored by StoryBlock. Hola chamas y chamos, welcome back to Alvaro Dev Labs. Today I'm really excited because I have the opportunity to present you what I have been working on since last December. So last week I had the opportunity to talk at We Are Developers UES Day hosted on the 1st of February. There I presented 3 yes, which is the library that will allow you to use Vue to build 3D experience using 3GS. Also, I want to thank you for all the support that you have been giving me the last days, especially when we announced it on Twitter, everything went crazy. You guys started to share it everywhere and we got a lot of nice messages, constructive feedback that will allow us to continue improving the project itself. So this video is dedicated to all of you. Thanks for the support. Okay, let's get started. So um, I'm going to start by uh, clicking on the animation here because when we started sharing uh, this uh, library on the social media, we created the animation because the logo uh, looked familiar with certain Netflix series. So we made the animation with several icons and let me know in the comments if you know which series it is um, because we got a lot of messages regarding that. Also, I want to um, share why Tres Yes, why the naming. Um, so Tres is the Spanish word for tree. So this is kind of a wrapper around Tree Yes, which is a WebGL library built in JavaScript. And the reason we are using, um, well, there are two reasons why we are using the Spanish word. One is because the French word is already used by another library that is not currently maintained and because I'm Venezuelan, so it makes sense to use 3 yes, right? To get this started, we need to create a new app using Vite. So I created uh, using the template of Vue with TypeScript, and here we have the basic um, project that it creates, okay? So with the hello world, uh, with the two uh, logos here, and everything good. So I installed already the dependencies, um, but we need to install Tres. So uh, to do that, we're gonna go to the documentation and click on Get Start. So there are two ways that you can use uh, Tres. You can start by uh, copying the, the install commands here, or you can use Stack Blitz to play with it online without the need of downloading any code. In this case, we're gonna use PNPM Okay, and it's pnpm add tree, and then tree because if it's a pure dependency, we need it to, to make it work, and then add tres yes slash code. So we go here on VS Code and we open the terminal, and then we copy and paste the command, and we do enter, and hopefully everything is gonna be installed just fine. Okay, now let's see how we can use it. So as any other plugin, you will need to use the app.view. So here I'm gonna use app, create app, okay? And then replace this with app mount. And in the middle, we're gonna use app use, and we're gonna pass press here, okay? So, we need to import it from the library. Right here, I'm gonna put in uh, Tres, and not from here, but from Tres ES Core. 
Also, you can pass some options here. So whenever you open here, you can pass all the options that you need, like the prefix, for example, if you wanted to have uh, the, the components to have a different prefix. Okay. Now let's create our experience. So to do that, we're going to go to components. We probably want to remove the hello world component that comes by default and create a new one. So I'm basically going to do that. I'm going to do the experience. view and this is going to be a script setup tag okay we're going to come back to this one in a little bit and in the app view i'm going to probably import it so it's going to be the experience right here okay maybe i will zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see and also i'm going to close the sidebar so the experience here that's fine and then we are going to call it here. So to see if that everything works, I'm going to add a dummy uh, stuff here. So I'm going to say like a wee wee. Okay. So if we go to the browser itself, we will see our dummy text, meaning that everything is fine. From now on, I'm going to assume that you might or not have experience with 3ES at all. So follow me while I'm creating the scene. And in another uh, tutorial, I'm going to show how it works under the hood. But for now, let's just focus on creating something. So I'm going to copy and paste this here. Here we have a Tress Canvas component, which is the wrapper that will hold all your uh, 3D experience. This is uh, the similar to the render, okay? I'm gonna use the window size because uh, I want my uh, scene to cover the whole window because normally, if you um, by default, you can have um, uh, the 3D scene will adapt to the container. Then I'm gonna add a, per a Tress Perspective camera uh, normally in 3GS you use or perspective or orthographic, but m most of the time you're going to use perspective. Notice that we are preparing or like using the prefix of tress for all the components. Then we have the tress scene, which is one of the most important. Inside of this one, we are going to declare all the objects, lights, textures, etc. of our uh, 3D experience. Why the perspective camera is not inside? Because you need three things to make a 3D experience with WebGL. You need the canvas element or the DOM, you need a camera and you need a scene to render, okay? Uh, I said WebGL, but it's actually three years, okay? So if we save this and we go to our browser, we're gonna see that it's actually blank. But if we inspect it, um, let's to toggle the developer tools here, and I'm going to inspect this here, we're going to see that the canvas is actually initialized with 3GS, the latest version, and it has a correct width and height. So actually, how can we see if it, it really works? We are going to try adding a mesh. So a mesh is just basically um, two things together, the structure of a geometry, which is defines like the vertices where everything goes and the material would define like the uh, visual aspect, like the color of the mesh, like if it's reflective, if it's not, okay? So I'm gonna use a color till here and let's save it, go back to the browser and we still can't see anything. That's because we need to pass some parameters into the camera. Right now, both things are in the same position in the scene, which is the center. So it's like the camera is basically our eyes in the scene. If it's in the inside of the geometry, we're not gonna be able to see it. For now, just trust me, pass a prop called arcs into your perspective camera right here, and we're gonna pass an array. So the first uh, field is like, the first parameter is the field of view. So how much you're able to see. We're gonna use 75, which is a big one. Normally you use between 45 and 75. Then we're gonna use the aspect radio, which you don't have to uh, care about that. And then we are going to use, um, set the near and the four, okay? Then we need to add the position. 
So to do that, we are going to use the position um, array. And in this case, we're going to set it on one, one, one. Okay. And let's see if we can see it. Ta -da! Right here, there is our cube, but it's really difficult to see because this isn't like in the left part of the scene. So how we can um, see it better? We have two options. We can move the camera or where is the camera located? In this case, if we move it to zero in the X axis, this is X, Y, and C. So in the X axis, axis we're gonna see it right here. If we use the zeta, we're gonna see it like a far from. So if we use four, we're gonna see it like this, and the, we can set the position in the Y axis to the center, and we're gonna see it like in front. So that's fine because we're moving the camera let's set like one and one here to be able to continue seeing or receive we can also change the position of our object so to do that we can pass to the mesh component the same uh, property that we did with the camera so in this case we're going to use position and we're going to pass here um like where we want to, to, to put it. So in this case, maybe we want to uh, bring it up a little bit, but uh, maintain it in the X axis. Um, let's put like two in the Y axis and zero in the Z axis and see where is it. So right now it's like here, but it's easy to get lost like in the space because we had no reference on where the origin is. To do that, um, we can add a Tress uh, Axis Helper. So here we're going to use Tress Axis Helper. We save. Now we have um, some visual indicator of where the origin is. This is the zero, zero, zero. And we can see how our um, like objects are positioning in the scene uh, from its origin. Now let's go back to the actual code and here we can see that we haven't used any uh, JavaScript whatsoever. We have done everything with view components and that's the magic of Tress.js, yes, that most of the things you can achieve them by using view components. Of course, there are more complicated stuff like animations and things that you might want to use JavaScript. So, one thing that is important to mention is that you had two different kind of props. You have one that is the argument, which basically is the parameters you want the instance, in this case, the perspective camera to be initialized with. So when you create a perspective camera, you want to initialize it with certain values. The same we can do it with the box geometry here, for example, we can define the width, the height, and so we can do that by using arcs, okay? So it's always gonna be arcs and it's always gonna be an array. So for the box geometry, we can pass the width, the height and the depth of the box. So let's try something funny like something like this, okay? So we go here and we refresh, we are gonna see that our um, geometry has changed. Uh, let's try another values like this one, uh, 0.5, for example, and go back. And we're going to see that um, it's difficult because we don't have any light here, but we can, we, we can solve that pretty easy because we also have the materials here. If you use normal material and you remove the color, normal material is really nice because uh, it will give you this kind of material that is like a default one. So you can see like the different uh, sides of it. If I, for example, move the camera a little bit from the side, so like three here, and we refresh, we're gonna see that um, there is a different color on the side. But before we continue, some words from our sponsors. Looking for a CMS solution that is great both for marketing teams and developers? Look no forward. StudyBlock is the headless CMS solutions that you always wanted to have. See how easy it is to change content for your website with a real-time visual editor creating a delightful customer experience for your teams. Go from a content update to production in no time. 
StudyBlock is easily integrable with multiple tech stacks, making your dev team's life easier. Go and try it for free at studyblock.com. But there is something that is bothering me a lot, actually is killing me, and is that uh, my camera is looking at the front, but it's not really the front. Like here is the region of the scene, and I have this cube right there uh, on the left, and um, for me it's distracting. So how we can solve this? We basically will need to use props. And we have been using props for the perspective camera. When we changed the position, we were using the prop position. And also when we were changing the position of the mesh, we were doing the same thing. So how we can tell the camera to actually look to the center. So there is a, a prop called look at, okay? That accepts also a vector or an array where you tell it where do you want it to see. So if we save here and we go back here and we save, we, we refresh, we're gonna see that now the camera is looking at the center of the scene and also give us a different perspective of the cube itself, which looks really weird right now. So I'm probably going to change here to um, basic um, cube of 111. Uh, no, this is the position, sorry. So here I'm gonna say 111, okay. And now we have a better looking scene. Everything on the side. Nice. Uh, something that we can also do um, is here, we can change the rotation of it. So if we use rotation, uh, it's also an array that accepts, I think they're radians, not degrees, but uh, I don't remember correctly. So basically how you can rotate in the X value, in the Y, and in the C value. And uh, I'm doing this with the hands because it's easier to show, you know. Um, but here, let's put something like math uh, pi, okay? So that gives us uh, radians. And then we are gonna divide it by a certain value, like for example, six. And here, because um, this between two, I think is 90 degrees. Okay, so this uh, must be like 30 degrees, I don't know, most probably. Uh, let's do uh, Y and C and see what happens. So you can see that the cube is rotated. So congratulations, you already have a scene with the cube rotated on it. Uh, I know it's simple, but I wanted to showcase how you can use Stress Yes to start building 3D experience on the web. So you can expect in the next tutorials a lot of more stuff. So um, right now we have seen how to use the Tress Canvas, how to use the perspective camera and the scene, but in the future we're gonna see how to animate it, how to add lights, how to add shadows, how to uh, listen to every frame uh, change, and so on. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the bell to get notification for all these new tutorials that I'm gonna build about Tress, yes, and don't forget to subscribe or drop a like. I don't think so. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, write them down in the comments below. I will be more than happy to help. You can find the repository for this example on the description below. Uh, it's gonna live in a specific branch with the name of the YouTube uh, video. With that being said, I hope you enjoy and see you in the next time. Ciao, ciao.